Welcome back, guys, to Kerbal Space Explosion. So the EVE Mega Mission is finished. We've returned. Well, okay, let me back up. The EVE Mega Mission is not finished. The Gilly Mega Mission, check mark. <laughs> On our checklist of things to do, check mark for Gilly. Done with Gilly. EVE, not so much. We left Buzz there, unfortunately. We didn't bring back very much science from EVE. I think the only thing I really brought back was, uh, what, like an EVA report high over EVE was about it. We can actually check in our science archives. Okay, so Eve. Um, while in space high over Eve, while in space near Eve. Okay, so we got both of those. EVA report, good for me. Uh, recovery of a vessel returned from orbit around Eve. 40 science for that, that's pretty good. Look at that. And then zero for seismic scan, mystery goo, gravity scan, yada, yada, yada. Uh, all of those are still there and I guess if I send another ship to Eve to recover Buzz, which we will do eventually, uh, we'll probably just redo that science. Uh, but this is all the stuff we got from Gilly. That was a good bit of science. But unfortunately, that left us with three bits of our tech tree unfinished. And let's see, each one of these is 550. It's going to take 1650. I have 300, so 1350 more science we need to get. And I want to finish the tech tree before we leave for our super, super, uber duper mission for Jewel. And we also need to rescue some fellas. We've got a number of stranded Kerbins in, in various places around the, uh, around the entire system. And so this is what we're going to do. We're going to launch a series of rescue missions. And when I originally went to the moon and to Minmus and all these other places, I didn't always have all of the available science uh, science stuff, uh, particularly the gravioli detector. So when we go to rescue some guys, we're gonna hopefully get a little bit of extra science along the way. First thing we're gonna do, we're gonna go to the moon and rescue Tom Hat Kerman, who was stranded there, if you remember, when I sent a ship to the moon using only boosters. And this is the ship we're going to rescue him in. It's got a probe core piloting the thing, some solar panels, and then some empty ch empty chairs. And uh, we may reuse this for another flight. I could have just made some boring everyday rocket. I decided to do something a little bit different. I wanted to make something fun to fly. And so this is the USS Pancake. No, it's just actually called the Pancake. Pancake, Mark, whatever, however many attempts it took me to get one with enough uh, enough rings to get all the way up there. Five, four, three, two, one, go. Probes don't need a countdown. They can just go. And it doesn't have any launch stabil st stabilizer tower things. We just have landing legs. And I hit the G key, and the first I guess the first few stages of this thing are going to be a little slow because the game is lagging out, and we can't really go full throttle. Because, you know, yada, 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 atmosphere, whatever. And if you if you watch the uh, the second count here, we've been on we went we're on second six for like ten seconds, and second seven only for like three or four seconds, second eight. Yeah, okay. So we're at like 0.25 of normal speed or something like that. But uh, I wanted to I wanted to make something a little different. I, I made this little lander right here, this guy, and uh, it seemed to be like a, a very I don't know I kind of liked it. It was it seemed very efficient and. Nicely designed, compact, and I thought, well, why not just take it to the nth degree and keep adding uh, um, these little tanks and the, the little, I don't even remember what these things are called. Rocco Max 48 7S, yeah, it doesn't exactly roll off the tongue. Hard to remember random numbers and letters like that, but only has a specific impulse of 30 or something like that. Um, or the power, anyway. The, uh, the ISP is... 300 in sea level and 350 in a vacuum. The the actual power it's putting out is only 30, I think. Okay, there's the first ring. See the whole thing buckle. I also kind of I thought about uh, putting a bunch of separatrons on these so that they go f spinning off when that happens. But that ship, uh, with 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 all the stages intact, has a little bit over a thousand parts already. So I figured. Uh, let's not add extra complexity. The launch is already going to be slow enough. And I'm not even watching my speed here. It's kind of on autopilot almost. 
We're up to 150 at 3,200 meters. The sort of uh, limit of speed you want to be going at 3,000 meters is 130-ish. So we're, we're going a little bit too fast, but not too bad. Let me just I'll throttle down a little bit. We want to be at 200 meters per second. What is it, like at 7,200 meters or 7,300 meters high, something like that. And it's not really that finicky, this ship. Uh, I could I could just throttle all the way up, probably, and we would still get there and get back just fine. We're going to have lots of fuel left. But hey, I'm a technical person. I'm, I'm a very... Ooh, look how pretty that looks. It's like a... It, you know what it looks like as a... It looks like a flying saucer, except for the fact that it has like a zillion little... A zillion little engines on it. I think I did count the total number of engines it starts with. I think it's 145 of these little guys. Oh, yeah, we're going too fast already. Already up to 200, and we're only at 6,000 meters. So I'm going to throttle down for a bit. We should get to the gravity turn right as this stage is ending. Okay, there we go. There we go. And we'll get to about 250 meters per second now, and now we can start speeding up. And as soon as we stage here, boink, then we'll start turning. There we go. All right, start turning. Now, does this thing have... Did I put reaction uh, reaction wheel on this thing? Can we see one? I'm not sure I did, which makes me wonder... Oh, yeah, there is one under here. Uh, you can see that whole thing shifting back and forth when I try and tilt it for some reason. I guess that's the reaction wheel saying, hey, go this way. The uh, These little guys don't have any torque on them. And the the probe core only has like 1.5 or something like that. Very little torque at all. So I put a reaction wheel on there and it really helps. Just that one reaction wheel makes this whole thing flyable. Because these little engines, I, I don't think they have gimbling. I also don't think they re refuel your electric charge. They don't refill it. So I have some passive solar panels here, just in case I forget to open the solar panels and I go around the dark side of a planet with the SAS on or something. Run out of charge. That would be a nightmare. All right, let's speed up. Let's get a move on, little doggy. I really do like this design. I like taking things to extremes, if you didn't know. And pretty soon, the, what is it, 0 0.23, 0 0.5 patch, the one in between 0.23 and 0.24 is coming out, which I think is the one that's going to have the asteroids, which you can try to go, I think the, the goal is to try to deflect it from hitting a Kerbin or something like that. And there's also a number of, uh, there's a new category of rocket and and tank there's going to be one even bigger than the orange tank so a larger diameter which will make the the, the traditional vertical staging uh, more competitive with the sort of asparagus staging type stuff so i may go back to like some super duper vertical rockets at that point 800 meters per second 900 meters per second. Moving right along. Okay, so at this point, let's just, let's get on with it, eh? Eh? We're almost out of the thick part of the atmosphere. We're moving like stink. I'll just go ahead and tip over all the way. I like doing it this way so that when we get to the the orbital burn, it, it takes almost no time at all. Nope, there goes that stage. Bye-bye. It would, you know, I don't know, man. It would be cool to put separatrons on those, just have them spin all over the place. And I'm going to go up to about 75,000 meters as is standard. But you guys know the drill. All right, so um, we, I've done this like a million times now. And this is still by far my favorite part of the game is launching rockets into orbit. Of all the things to do in the game, that's still my favorite. Uh, because I guess maybe because I like having the huge rockets and all the engines firing and everything. And once you get to orbit, at least some of your at least some of your rocket is gone, you know, cuz you stage it. 
and it never really looks as impressive as it does in the first minute or so. Here we go, burning for the moon. 15 seconds. This, that, that, those are some noisy engines. Holy cow. Let me turn down my volume. Whoa. Okay, and stage. And, whoa, look at that. Okay, if we don't, um, if we did nothing, we would end up in that wonky orbit. We're going to end up with a periapsis of, well, I guess that's okay. It's a little bit high, but that's not a big deal. Let's zip away. We still have tons of fuel left. Way more than we're going to use, as you might expect from one of my ships. Completely over-engineered. But I thought, hey, why not? Whoa! Oh, look at this. That is, that's a really bizarre encounter there. Okay, so first thing we need to do, we need to get into orbit, and then our target is uh, down there in the bottom. Tom Hat, way down there. Okay. So let's get here. And then I guess I left him outside of the ship because it says there's the Mooner Booster, which is the only booster ship we sent to the moon. And he is right next to it. The coordinates are quite similar, I guess, kind of. I'm just going to assume that's him. That's the only uh, that's the only guy on the moon. I haven't really gone to the moon much with this save file because I went to the moon a lot with the previous save file. Okay, let's see if I can... Let's see which way do I want to turn this. Maybe this way? We may as well do this when we do our orbital burn. Uh, let's bring that back down something like yeah that's about right and we'll tweak it the rest of the way once we get into that that should be good and the moon does it turn at all is it tidally locked I think it's tidally locked like Earth's moon and so we shouldn't worry about him like spinning around or anything right I think so I think that's the way it works I'm not exactly authority an authority on these matters, but um, if we get into trouble, we're going to have so much extra fuel, it doesn't even matter. So who cares? Who cares? We'll fix it later. We'll, uh, we'll fly by the seat of our pants, as per usual. There goes the moon. I remember, like, my first time coming to the moon ages ago. Six months ago, I guess. It's been about six months, how long I've been playing this game. And I had to make all these, like, orbital maneuver adjustment maneuvers like five or six along the way to the moon I didn't really understand the mechanics I was super paranoid about screwing it up and now if I want to come to the moon it's like yeah whatever <laughs> so it's, it's amazing uh, something that was so hard at one point is now just like I don't even think about it you just do it do it boink okay maybe uh, you know it at one point, I, th I kind of thought uh, docking was so hard, and now that seems easy as well. Maybe at some point, landing on EVE and taking off will become child's play as well. Which way are we going? Okay, we're going this way. And we basically want to land there. So I'm going to do something like this and pull on the retrograde. Just like that. We are coming in, we're coming in hot. We're coming in hot. Let's burn off some speed. There. There, and let's get rid of those. Hopefully we don't land on them. Hopefully they explode a bit. And we're gonna come in just to the side. Let's do that. Sploosh. Oh no, wait, no, I wanna go kinda this way. Something like that. Pow! Okay, speed up. Whoa, okay, too fast. Whoa, okay. Oh, we landed. <laughs> we were on the hill. We weren't as high up as I thought. Okay, we're here. We've made it. We made it, Tom Hat. Okay, let's hit the bracket key. Uh, no, okay, don't want to be that. Okay, let's go the other direction. That's a landing leg. Landing leg. Landing leg. Tom Hat's around here somewhere. That is an intact 
There we go. Here he is. No, that's the flag. Tom Hat! Okay, jeez, man. He's been standing here. I wonder if he has the million mile stare here. We left him here. It's got to be years ago now in Kerbal Space Program time. Look at him. T plus 400. He's been here over a year. 420 days. Actually, I'm not sure how many days it takes um, for Kerbin to or orbit the sun, but it's less than 365. In the new patch, one of the things they're updating is you can switch it to Kerbin time, by the way. So instead of 24 hours, it's six hours for a Kerbin day. I think I think it's six hours, and uh, a relatively short time as well for to go around the sun. But yeah, he he's not there anymore. He's mentally gone. <laughs> he's been standing here for 420 days, and it doesn't look like he's even moved in a long time. Okay, so where is the pancake Mark IV? That's which mark it is. And uh, it wasn't really a challenging ship to make. The Mark IV, I, I just named a new mark for additional rings. So I have a simpler, smaller version as Mark I. I think Mark I is just the lander itself. And then Mark II has a few more rings. Mark III has a few more rings. And Mark IV is the one we used. So we'll fly over here to the pancake. Hopefully we don't crash into it and ruin it jeopardize our entire rescue mission uh he should have we should probably go ahead and bring a soil sample i did not check oh gosh oh no no get up no no <laughs> that's close oh we almost crashed into it okay come on man get your act together well now we're 800 meters or no we're only 160 meters from it get up jeez um, we could take a surface sample and bring that back with us. And let's just go ahead and take another EVA report. Get up, you lazy bum. Jeez. <laughs> 200 meters. Let's, uh, let's try and be a little more careful coming in. And I'll, I'll burn retro, retrograde to slow us down a bit. So we're not being quite so silly with our speed here. And I did put uh, some gravioli detectors and the accelerometers on the bottom of this guy. No strange goo. No science juniors. I, I decided they were a little bit too heavy. I wanted to make this guy light and easy to fly. One thing I'm not sure of is how unbalanced this thing is going to be with Tom Hat here um, in one of these chairs. Come on, Tom Hat. Get over here. Okay, and get in. Tom Hat, you kind of seem stuck. I can't move him now. Uh-oh. He's stuck. Get in the chair, Tom Hat. Oh, here we go. You have to right-click it. Cannot, what? Cannot board a seat while not standing still. Oh, great. Huh, what if I do a bracket? Yeah, he's stuck in the geometry of the chair. Maybe I should do a quick load. All right, here we go. Let's try this again. Turn your jetpack on, Tom Hat. Turn it on. There you go. All right, let's get up in the air. And then I think maybe I just need to stand like next to the things. Okay, I should be standing still. Board. There we go. Okay, he boarded. Good. He's got his surface sample. And he's got his... Uh, EVA report. Okay, long seismic data. 80 science from the moon's highlands. And then let's click on this guy. Log gravity data. 80 science. Gravity scan. Awesome. Okay, good. There we go. Um, we've rescued Tom Hat. But have you noticed there are three empty chairs? <laughs> and we have a lot of fuel left. Hmm. What could that mean? That's right. We're taking off from the moon and we're heading to Minmus and we're picking up Jebediah, Bill, and Bob who have been in exile. We will not forget them. They are not forgotten. We're going to get them. Next time. Not this episode. Next time on Kerbal Space Program.